Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to Stormworks. This is going to be episode 6 of the career playthrough, and the first thing I'm going to be doing is building a new boat, because I had a serious falling out with the previous one. Um, that is not going to be shown on YouTube, because it is just... <laughs> no. <laughs> that was really not very funny. Well, you can ask the stream that, anyway. Um, this new boat is going to be another one of those workhorses. It probably won't be particularly pretty because I simply don't have the parts for it yet. And I don't have too much cash either. I just have 21k. Which is enough to build a decent boat. But not really enough to fool anyone into thinking that you actually have a boat that's going to last you a very long time. And I'm going with one block and then a line like this. This could provide a more stable hull platform. At least previously when I was building a shape like this. That actually worked quite well. Shape it up like this. And we're going to need the pyramids for the bow here. One, two, three, four. Add another one here. Okay. Now we're going to take it back to the rear. And I could make this thing wider to give it more stability. And judging how our last boat fared, I think more stability is not really a bad thing. Uh, so this is where the next block should be going up. And then here. I hope that this thing is going to be operating a little better than the other one was. This is going to be a heck of a lot wider, but that also means more parts required, unfortunately. But screw it, if it works, then I'll take it. Okay, what do I have for engines? Actually, we're going to have to make it a lot taller than this. Yeah, we're going to go with a bigger one. Um, drag it up here. Yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't allow you to do that. Now, this is going to be a bigger and much, much more stable boat. Simply by virtue of having more flotation capacity. The other one just didn't have enough. And that really cost me several boats. Uh, I need one more like these. A pyramid. And one of these. There we go. Now I need the pyramids. There we go. That's the bottom, the uh, basic hull shape. Now instead of having a bow like I previously did, I now have something that's a little bit more sloping. And as such, should be more stable. Should. Now, engine-wise, what are we going to be doing? For proper ballast. <laughs> Thanks, Fedbot. Much appreciated. Um, we only have the basic engine. With the electrical cable. Um, yeah, let's go with a couple of engines. 
I could get each prop its own engine. Okay, let's set up the props first and then go with the engines. Because then I also know where the gearboxes are going to go. Uh, first a pipe. Come on, like that. That's what going to be where my generators go. Two small generators. Then uh, the gearboxes. Pointing towards the engine. Like that. And like that. And two more. Now a clutch. I put B. Should be going the other way. Yep, there we go. And now I can hook up the engines. So now I need to know where, or now I know where the engines need to go. Which is about here. Um, a little bit further forward. That should do. Okay, let's set this boat up. Pipes come up from the clutch and then move into the engine or vice versa, whichever way you want to look at the boat. These are the fuel ports, the exhaust ports, the air ports, coolant in, coolant out. I can take down this set of blocks here now. And we can have the pipes going down. And fluid ports down there. So this is where the boat's going to be getting its coolant and dropping off its hot fuel. Or hot, not well not hot fuel, but hot fluids from the engine. Now we can easily add the pipes. If the game feels like it's cooperating that is come on there okay so that's the coolant now we have the exhaust and the fuel um, I can have the exhaust coming out of the back here so this is going to be an angled pipe and the intake air I can have somewhere on the sides of the boat. One more. This is more so I know where to go. Okay, I'm going to pipe the exhaust ports back and then combine them into one. And that needs to go here. So we're going to go up. And we're going to split it up here. Go forward. Turn it. Could a keel prevent flipping? Absolutely it can. <clears throat> because that way you know that that part is going to be the heaviest. And depending on how much I'm going to be putting on this boat, how much weight that is on the top of it, I'm going to see if that's required, yes or no. Because it also weighs you down. And by virtue of weighing you down, of course it makes the boat slower. Um, let's go with eight medium fuel tanks. Connect all these up to their own engine. And a pipe like that and there. 
these need to go to this part over here. So we can loop it over the engine and then directly to the fuel tank. This one goes up eventually. Straight up and I oh, forgot the middle ones. Straight down and connect to the fuel tanks. There we go. Okay, now I want a couple of ad blocks because now I want to see what exactly is in that tank. In each of them, that is. Like that. Let's paint a couple of these things so I know which one is which. These are the exhaust ports. And they come up from over here. And from over here. The black ones are the fuel lines because they go immediately to the fuel tanks. And I know that these are not really the official colors, but this is the way that I remember it. This is how it makes most sense for me. Uh, yeah, you're right. I need to cross fuel or cross feed these fuel tanks. These are all going down at the bottom, so I don't really need to paint those, but I do need to have a look at these things. Um, this should do it. Good call there, Schweinstein, because I kind of forgot about that. And we can just loop these things directly out the side of the boat here. So that's going to be the fluid port or the fluid connector. Pipe it through. There we go. Okay, so now our engine compartment is almost completed. We just have the air intake for the engines. Um, I can have those sort of on the deck level, but I want them to go up a little higher to make sure that they have enough breathing space, literally, in case the boat goes out into rough weather. Uh, pipe straight. That's going to be the deck level. Like that. Now I can close this rear part up, but not before I add a couple of batteries. Or I think one medium battery should do it. And this medium battery is just going to power everything. But it's also going to get recharged by the engines, of course. Or by the generators, these two. And it should power all the engines so that those things can start up. You can direct to the fuel ports. Now I can close it up. Oh, not like that. Here we go. All right. Uh, rudders. Never leave home without one. That is, unless you have fluid jets, in which case rudders can work. These things you need to set up one by one, or they're going to start counteracting each other. There. Now I can close this part up, I can close this part up. And I can add a clutch switch, that's a clutch microcontroller that I built up here, so I can immediately control all the clutches. So this thing controls whether power gets sent from the engine to the propellers, yes or no. I also need to remember to provide power to my rudders, there. And over here I can now build the rest of my boat. Unfortunately, because I have one of those slightly I'm not even sure how you'd call that, indented holes maybe. I need to set those blocks up slower because normally it just chops off whatever is hanging outside your boat. Uh, 
And I will leave it. Damn it. I'll leave it to you guys in chat what this boat should be called. Come up with a good name. One more here. See, this is what I was worried about. Now I have a couple of blocks outside the boat. There. Okay, check for leaks. Nothing here. Nothing here. We should be fine. Center of mass is a little high. So I'm going to go with a couple of weight blocks as a keel to make sure that I don't actually tip over again. No, I want weight blocks for that, not the standard ones. All right, that lowered the center of mass a little. Let's go with a bit more. I think that should do for now. If it still tips over, we'll just see how it goes. Spawn it in, see if it floats. Whoa! The crane's not supposed to pick that thing up. Uh, where are the crane controls again? Here. Up. <laughs> this is not supposed to happen. Um, yeah, we'll just pretend that didn't happen. Spawn it in. There we go. Okay, it floats. It seems to be at a decent level above waterline. Good. Okay, so these two are the exhausts. These two, or these four, are the air intakes. Further pipes. And an exhaust on top of that. This is going to be the uh, outside line of the boat. <coughs> I can switch these things for triangles or pyramids or whatever they're called. Uh, we're going to be entering the boat right about here. Come on. Like that. And the fuel, no, the air intake. I can loop that across the deck. Uh, where am I going to put those? Where am I going to put those? First, I'll do a bit of superstructure build. Although, I don't want to have too much superstructure on this ship. Because superstructure means weight, and a boat being top heavy. It's generally not a good idea. Okay. Controls. I'm going to go with the seat. Um, yeah. Seat here. I want a throttle. We really need one on each side. Not really. So one over there. A push button. Start up our engines. A couple of toggle buttons for the gearboxes. Oh, I should have three gearboxes, come to think of it. Not two. Because if I only have two, then I cannot use a reverse gear. Um, right. So, back to pipes. Gearbox. Pointing at the engine.
doesn't have to be particularly pretty, this solution. It just has to have enough room so I can add all this stuff. Come on. There we go. And I can loop this pipe up. Shit. Can I just not add another one on top of it? Yeah, that'll work. That must be one of the most messy gearboxes set up, setups that I've done. <laughs> the deep water horizon, yeah. All right, I'll go with that. Um, same solution here. So that's stacking two gearboxes on top of each other. One like that, one like that. Uh, then a pipe. And now we just hook those things up. And that should do it. Now I did throw my power supply out of whack. Wrong gearbox. Unfortunately, the power connections do not automatically get mirrored, so you have to manually hook those things up again each time. Check that everything is getting power. Check, check, yep. All right, now I can set them up. This is gonna be the reverse gear. And these gears are all gonna start out with a standard one, one ratio, then a two, three. And then the second gearbox is going to be a one, three. I think that these engines should be able to handle something like that. Okay. So now, uh, this is going to be... This was the engine starter. So click that, 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 and that. So this is start engines. Also going to need a clutch. Uh, that would be a toggle button. And this one goes to the microcontroller. The throttle then goes to every engine. Throttle, 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 throttle. And this one is going to be, let's say, gear two. Gear two, gear one, and reverse. These ones were the last gearboxes. Uh, gear one was going to be the second one. And gear two is this one. Okay, that works. Now I need to set up the control scheme again. So this one goes into throttle up. This one goes to throttle down. So this is throttle up. This is throttle down. And they're gonna be push buttons, not toggle buttons. Uh, time to see how fast we're going since I can now actually have one of those things set up. I'm going to go with display. And I usually have a linear speed sensor in the bow of my boat with a KPH microcontroller so I can see what my speed is going to be in kilometers per hour. 
So this one feeds into there, and this one feeds into the display. Now I just need a whole host of dials to see what the stats of my boat are going to be. Um, I have four fuel tanks each. Actually, since all fuel tanks are looped together, I can have all of these things added up. And then one center one. Okay. So these two ad blocks are going to go into that one. Feeds into that. Here, here, and there. And that's going to be the only fuel dial that I need. Okay, so this is fuel. Uh, what is 8 times 187.5? 8 times 187.5 is 1,500 liters of fuel. That's quite a lot. And you take your data from this one. Then I want four more to show me the RPMs of my engines. This one's going to be the outer one. Uh, that would be temperature. RPM, or RPS, actually, not RPM. And they can go from 0 to 20. Although I usually set them up at 25. Otherwise, they're going to be ticking up on the, well, the uppermost side of the dial. Doesn't look right. Uh, so this is RPM L1, RPM L2, RPM R1, RPM R2, like that. Okay, so those things are all set up. Uh, A and D goes to the rudders. And I think that's it for the control schemes. I just need to have one of those electric engines or motors and power one lonely prop so I can operate in smaller areas without using the main engines. Oh, I set that thing up the wrong way. Uh, those are the throttles. The throttles should control the engines, not W and S. There, that's better. Okay, hook everything up. And that goes to the battery. I think we're almost ready to take this thing out. I just need to make sure that it gets some air. So, um, that's going to be a f an oxygen or a fluid port. I know I have those close to the exhaust, but the game really does not care about that. The game just does not mind if you do it like this. No pipe. Uh, I need an angled one. You go over there and you go the other way. Straight pipe down the middle. T piece where it connects them up. Another angled one over here. And a couple of straight lines like that. Close up the deck space. Okay. So now we have air breathing engines with exhausts, with fuel import or fuel intakes. Yeah, so we could get underway if I wanted to. Um I'm going to set up a small cargo area here. There's a guarantee that I'm going to be doing more cargo missions. 
Oh, crap, that's where the ladders are. Now, these cargo areas tend to be top-heavy, but they don't need to be completely filled up, if that makes any sense. I can have these... We could call them ventilation ports. This wouldn't quite do it justice. But this way, I can still have my crates in here. And they wouldn't be too heavy. The cargo compartments. There. Connectors. I want a toggle button just on the left here. Then we're going to import that thing that I built previous, the cargo bay door. Paste. Uh, I can go with pipes. Pipes are, yeah, they're one mass each, so it doesn't really matter. Symmetry on. Connectors on there. Uh, and always on. Constant on signal. Only on this side. That hooks up to one, two, three, four, five, six. This one controls these two. I want that thing on by default. It's going to be the cargo door. And I need to hook them up to the power. And that would be the power. Check if it works. You can already hear it snapping into place. Yep, it works. Okay, good. So I can put my cargo in there. Um, at this point, I don't have a ladder anymore. Oops. Okay. Let's make this thing a little easier, or a little, yeah, a little easier on the eyes, a little more sloping here. Uh, add some lights. This time around, I'm just going to go with white lights. No particular flavor. Red or green or whatever. And someone's cutting holes in your ship. Yep. Toggle button. This one's going to be the lights. I want those on by default. Hook it up to the power grid. If it receives an on signal, I want you to power that one, that one, that one. Here, here, and here. Hook up the lights to the power. This one over there. There's the next one, next, next, and I can just loop that into the instrument panel. Okay, I think we're just about ready to get underway. Center of mass is a little high for my taste. So we're going to be cutting even more holes in the boat. And loop that forward. Yeah, that lowered the center of mass by half a block, sort of. And 
I will not have this thing tip over again. And this one goes from all the way back here to the bow. Okay, see if it floats. It does indeed float. Set up a couple of chairs or seats as they're called. And a bed in case I need to sleep to skip time and wait for a mission. And I think we're just about ready. So this was going to be the Deepwater Horizon. Test it out. Fuel pump to the hose, so that's working properly. I'm thinking what am I forgetting, because there's probably something. Let's not pump it full of fuel just yet. Give a little throttle to the engines. RPM's coming up. Burning a little bit of fuel. My electric engine isn't working. Okay. So my electric engine still needs to get a little bit more power. Um, yeah, we're moving. Slowly, but we're moving. And this is only 0.22 throttle. Throttle to full. This thing is deep in the water. 50 kilometers per hour. Gear 1. 54. Oh, that's reverse. Sorry. That immediately killed the engines. Yeah, we've got a neat bit of fuel consumption going on there. Now, how well does it turn? Like a brick. Really doesn't roll, doesn't take on any water. Or does it? Yeah, I shouldn't be making maneuvers too violent with this boat. And I need to get rid of a little bit of the keel. Because it's a bit too deep in the water at this point. I need to set up that electric engine properly. So we're going to get in here. Slowly, slowly, slowly kill the engine. Kill the engine, not ram into the dock. There's the fuel connector. It's a pretty boat. Ah, it's all right. It's all right. It's not one of the best boats I've built so far. But then again, I don't have too many parts available. Just got to go with what I get. I could make a sort of superstructure around this, but the problem is I don't have a door. So even if I would have a superstructure, I would not be able to keep it dry. So it'd be more like sort of a, I don't know, something to keep the area dry or to keep the pilot dry, but not so much to make sure there's no water in the boat. Anyway, let's take off one line of keel here. And why are you not... Ah, you're not getting any power. That would do it. Also, I want to know how my battery is doing at all times. No battery, no boat. So this goes to the battery. Battery standard or minus is zero, top is one. Okay. I think that should just about do it. Am I forgetting anything here? Don't really think so. 
Well, yeah, I can paint it, of course. Uh, let's go with the yellow paint job so I can easily find it when I inevitably lose it. I can guarantee you that that's going to happen at some point sooner or later. Oh, and I don't have a connect. Oh, crap. I don't have a connector on it yet. This is not a boat that's going to be designed to actually drag stuff out of trouble. But it will be a boat that is, or that should be able to get dragged out of trouble. So I need to have a connector on it to make sure that I can actually drag the boat out of somewhere if I need to. Paint a little bit more manually. Like the ladders. Okay, I think we're just about ready to go on a mission. Finally. Just about ready. Let's make that line a little wider. And add that connector before I forget about it. So this is going to be a small connector. Bow the boat. And make sure I can toggle that on easily. Um, I'm going to have one at the bottom of the boat. In case you're wondering why, well, sometimes this thing tips over. And if that happens, then I want to have a quick and easy access point of making sure that I can actually get that connector on. So this is going to be the, uh, the bow connector. And this one too. Bow connector. Okay. XOR. If you're getting a signal from either this one or from that one, then I want you to turn on the bow connector. And of course, I need to hook these things up to power. Because the last thing I want is to have a connector on my boat and not be able to power it. there. Okay, I think the Deepwater Horizon is ready for a mission. And that's something I'm going to be doing in the next episode. Thank you for watching. This was uh, very much a boat building exercise. And next episode, I'm going to be basically taking out this boat and getting it on a mission. Something other than store nuclear fuel, of course. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you soon for more episodes of Stormworks.